Hey everybody, welcome back to our Behind the Sound interview series. Today we're joined by Tom Van Gorkum, who is the broadcast engineer for KRIO AM and FM and KOIR FM. Hey Tom, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you, Justin, for having me. Absolutely. So uh, while the interview today is mainly going to focus on your recent implementations of our OmniVolt and MPX nodes, uh, you've been dealing with other Telos Alliance gear for quite some time. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background experience with Telos Alliance and uh, just how that all that relationship all started for you? Yeah, so um, when I came into this job, the outgoing engineer who was battling cancer told me one of the projects I was going to have to work on was replacing our consoles. And he said, you're going to have to make a decision if you're going to go digital or not. And this was back in 2013. Well, I worked my way through a lot of the upgrade projects we had around the plant, and I came up with the uh, com came up to the console systems. I had some summer interns, I believe that was in 2016, and I asked one of them to research what our options were and get me some price quotes. And so he studied it, came narrowed it down to two companies, which you can imagine, <laughs> and. Uh, presented it to me and I did some checking and thinking and uh, when we looked at you know our automation system uses or was able to use a live wire driver and there was no other drivers for the other digital systems that was a pretty big selling point um, the quality of TELUS Alliance equipment recommendations from others including Moody Radio that has a lot of uh, stations all over um, convinced me it would be a good option and I could eliminate sound cards, mm -hmm. which was a big advantage for me. Um, so uh, we decided to go ahead with uh, TELUS Alliance. We purchased our first Axia Fusion console and nodes probably the end of 2016 and installed them in 2017. And that got me started down a road. And once you start down a, a decision like that, you kind of want to be consistent as you can and keep things as compatible as possible. Sure. So that got me, got me down that road. And I had a, a plan of remodeling every one of our studios as I was able to make time and we had money. So I've now remodeled three studios and we've got two fusions and an IQX. Uh, but then I needed a solution for streaming that would not involve Windows. I just got tired of Windows reboots and updates and everything else. I wanted to use Linux if possible. Um, and the uh, Zip R1 looked like a good solution because it's a Linux box, basically. Mm -hmm. It just runs and I can feed it with Livewire. Just so many good options when, when you're working with, with Livewire in the plant. And so I went that direction with that. Then um, we wanted to have better uh, routing. So I added the Pathfinder Appliance Pro in January 2020. And then eventually got to the audio processors and MPX nodes. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you've kind of had a lot of experience using a little bit of everything from our Axia and Telos gear. But more recently, you ran into some issues with your audio processors and you needed a new solution on that front too. Um, so what sort of problems were you experiencing there and then what ultimately led you to Omnia? Well, um, I had had some processors for some time and about two years ago, one of them locked up every few weeks and the, the manufacturer had never heard of it, couldn't mm -hmm. figure anything out. I finally decided to get a backup and I replaced it. And after about a year, it started locking up, oh. but only at the transmitter sites. It was a strange one. And the manufacturer finally asked me to send the, the two I had that were locking up at the transmitter sites. Uh, and they have not been able to get them to fail. And when I have them in the studio, they don't fail. Was it RF? What was it? We could not figure it out, oh. but I can't have that happening. Right. And so I started looking around and I contacted my buddy, John Bissett, Bissett from Axia, who had helped us with the sales on the, the other Axia equipment. And he recommended I talk to Paul Krugler. And um, well, if any of you have talked to him, you know, 
he can be pretty convincing. He's pretty mm -hmm. knowledgeable. Oh, yeah. I think he's kind of the guru of Omnia audio processors. And uh, he offered to send me some demos. So I said, okay, I'll try them out. And I have to say, and, you know, I haven't played with all the latest of everybody's processors, like one of the major competitors. But because we're Livewire, of course, I'm influenced towards Omnia. And when I opened it up, the whole thing just felt like quality. Uh, the interface felt like quality. And I, and I realized the engine in the Volt, I got an Omnia Volt to try. And it's the same engine I believe they use in the Omnia 11 without all the extra bells and whistles, which is pretty high powered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes the differences are subtle and how you set them. But there's something about the Volt compared to what I was doing that had more clarity and punch. It just sounded better. And I liked the interface. And I liked that I could interface it with Livewire if I had Livewire where I wanted to feed it. Well, before long, Paul told me, hey, well, why don't you consider getting the uh, MPX node? And I go, oh, yeah, I've been kind of interested in those. So he sent me demo set. And I installed those. And he told me, you know, you get rid of your STL uh, overshoots and, and uh, I guess a little bit of distortion that happens in I think some out of phasing that happens in the in the composite that the STL radio links send I had not even played or even noticed that before played around with it I studied up on it and I go huh he's right there is something to do that so and he said besides that then you can put your Omnia Volt right there in the studio and just transmit your uh, composite over the IP and drive your transmitter direct and that sounded like a good idea. And I tried it and I love it. I started sending to two transmitter sites from one MPX node with one processor in the studio, no overshoots. And you know, it's hard to tell for sure, but I think I can hear a difference. And on the modulation monitor, I can see a little difference. So uh, I was sold. So I went in that direction and so now I can I can drive direct uh, live wire with my routing system doing any failovers, anything I need to do, and, and right in the studio. And on the transmitter side, I went ahead and got, and some people would say a yeah, purist like Paul might not like this, but I went ahead and got a, a broadcast tools um, composite switcher or switch so that I can use a rebroadcast receiver as a backup audio source from one of my other FMs. And so if I lose the connection of the composite, the MPX node, it'll automatically switch over to the rebroadcast, or in the case of another one, it'll switch over to the STL radios. Sure. So that I, I want to be sure and have redundant redundance everywhere I could. And I've got redundant um, internet as well. I use um, dual one bonding at my routers at the transmitters um, okay. okay so that i can feed two internet sources from two different isps into the same router and there's no no loss of the packets they're synchronized if i want to have them paralleled uses more data uh, it depends on your situation in the case my backup is verizon so i've got them tiered as priority one and two but with the mpx nodes you don't even hear it when it switches back and forth. And I am impressed. So moving forward into March of this year, uh, you also replaced a 30 year old AM transmitter as well. Um, you decided to give Volt a try here too. Uh, so how is that station sounding and have you noticed any differences there? Yeah, um, the problem is that I can't distinguish because we changed both the transmitter and the processor almost at the same time, I can't tell you for sure, mm -hmm. but I can tell you some good things. First of all, um, the new transmitter, which is, a, I'm just going to say it, it's a Nautel NX10, uh, really made a difference on performance with the antenna system. It's a, a four tower uh, directional antenna system. Mm. And so I know how that tuned up was part of the improvement in reach. 
But when I change the processor out, I could now, I can now crank it all the way to the maximum modulation without any issues. And people tell me that they've been able to, instead of having to turn their radios to get rid of static and things, now their, their AM re reception stays clean the whole oh, wow. time. That's awesome. And I just believe that I have a, a more clear audio. And I'm going to throw in something I just learned sure. from one of the uh, premier uh, gurus of AM antenna systems, uh, Tom King from Kentronics Labs. He told me this last week at a conference that he has a, he knows someone who's been playing with how you set your, your processing, eliminating or lowering the low end for AM. So you get more of the power in the mid range, mm -hmm. lower mid and, and upper mid. And he says, it, it looks like the reach increases even more. Wow. And so, um, if you get rid of some of the, you, you waste a lot of power in the low end when people's radios don't tend to, to let much of that through the receivers. Sure. And so that was interesting. But anyway, I, I love having the uniformity of processors and interfaces. And I just, uh, I think it just works better. So yeah, I'm pleased with it. So finally, most recently, you started the process of purchasing another station which is really exciting. Uh, now I know you haven't completely taken possession of the new station yet, but can you tell us about any new plans or purchases coming up for that station? Yeah, so it's got some fairly old gear in it. Um, we are only leasing programming time on it, paying for their operational costs in them while we're waiting for a closing on the sale. And because this is a licensing year for Texas, we have to wait until the FCC issues the renewed licenses before we can close the sale. Okay. So we're hanging in limbo there. Um, but I've already purchased another Volt and set of MPX nodes that will allow us to ha separate out our audio programming or bring it together, depending on how I route things. And give us redundancy if we have any issues here at the studio. So that's the plan. And uh, we just haven't taken possession yet. I can't do that. I'm just running a codec audio over IP on a very thin uh, Verizon uh, internet source right now. Well, that's awesome, Tom. Thank you so much for your insight and sharing a little bit about uh, all of your projects that you've been working on over the past year or so. Um, I'm sure that will help out a lot of other people who might be in similar situations. And, uh, you know, it's always nice to hear um, from a real customer how, how the process went for them. Um, so, again, we really appreciate that. Thanks for taking the time, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.